have, I think, more depth than anybody in the National Hockey League in every position, with the exception, perhaps, of goal. Their, uh, their fortunes are riding on the shoulders of, of Mike Vernon, just the way they are on Grant Fuhrer. It's for Gerald Diddick. It's for Gerald Diddick. Diddick for the Islanders with two minutes and ten seconds gone in the first period of our game tonight. No score. The puck angled in for Vernon. Wraps it around, and Brent Sutter tried to connect in front, but that went away from Derek King. And it is Hall jamming it back off the glass. Billy Smith able to sweep it along. Colin Patterson in there. Puck taken by big Joel Otto. Snaring pass in front, and deep behind the net. Merson tries to stop her, blocked off by Brent Sutter. Now it is Hall. Wanting the puck is Merson, but it comes back to Natras. Buries it on across, and Natras breaks to the front. Puck off a skate, and then is followed up by Hall. He scores! I think we just got our first look at Calgary's muscle. Even Brett Hall, when he finally got the shot away, had Brent Sutter hanging all over him. That was size and determination that get, kept getting the puck back for the Flames. Rick Natras had pitched in that time. He wears number six for Calgary. Before that, it was Merzen. Hall picks up the rebound. You can see that Billy Smith not only is out of position, but has no stick. It was Joel Otto that fed it in front for a pinching Rick Natras, and that is another element that we can talk about that the Flames have. Their defensemen are mobile enough. They're not reluctant to pinch in when they know it's time. Al McInnes, Gary Suter, we saw Merzen do it already. We've seen Rick Natras do it already. Brett Hall played for Terry Crisp and Moncton of the American League last year and tied a league record, scoring 50 goals as a rookie. Huck fired back in. Hall has connected on his 25th goal of the season, and he's not played in all the games, 53 of them. Deneen goes back to gather. We have three minutes gone here in the first period. And the puck oh, is by the New York oh, Islanders. We'll get an icing touch up made by McGinnis. The puck sent over the center red line and the end red line and touched first by the defense. Brett Hall has opened the scoring here. There he sits. Not bad for a guy that didn't even know he was going to suit up an hour ago. Of course, the, the Flames, with their depth, end up having to sit some people out. They have at least four. Is it four scratches tonight? And they have a couple of injuries that aren't even here. Here's Guy with the shot. That ricocheted loose and is played back along by Dale Henry. Henry behind the net. Forced one over to Deneen. And Deneen outlets up the wing. And this is the rookie Vakota moving in the right side. Trying to finesse Guy. And the puck tapped away. A penalty coming up. And a shot by Henry. Hit the post. Loose puck gathered in and worked out to the front. Vakota hustling one toward the net by Basson. And that one blocked and held by Vernon. And now we'll get the penalty call. Took three and a half minutes, but the Islanders got an offensive going. It was Mick Vakota moving up the wing to get things started on that. Probably the best chance was one by Henry, which ricocheted off the post. Three minutes, 41 seconds gone. First period, the Flames lead 1-0. Well, the Islanders have applied a little pressure of their own, and Kevin Guy, one of the big guys for Calgary, 15 players over six feet tall. That guy is one of them, Kevin Guy. Guy goes at 6'3", 202. Leiter hands over for the drive by Janssen and a good stick save by Vernon. Thomas Janssen has really been in hard luck scoring. It is since early November that he last collected a goal. On the year, he has just three. Billy Smith in the way, and that is going to cost is the call and Smith doesn't believe it just 20 seconds into his team power play it is lost you know you said it, it's going to cost it almost cost Joel Otto he caught him and looked like below the waist and, and anytime you get pinched in between the net and a player you have to make a quick movement I tore ligaments that way myself I've seen it a lot guys end up trying to squeeze into a space that's too small the ligaments go here comes Otto see Smith just backed into him you can see how he hit Joel Otto right in the thigh pad just above the knee that's a pretty good call. Billy Smith, that, there's little question in my mind from that replay that he did go down and try and, and give the hit to Joel Otto. I don't think he wanted to make that much contact. Obviously, if he flipped him over the way he did, he knew he was going to get a penalty. Just nudge him, throw him off balance, maybe force him into the net so he gets tangled up in it and hangs himself. Second-year coach, Terry Simpson, directing some traffic from the Islanders' bench. So both teams will be a man short for a minute 40, and then Calgary's impressive power play will have just a 20-second pop, barring any further penalties. 
Smith watching as the faceoff controlled by the Islanders and Thomas Johnson plays. He's matched up with Conroy. They have LaFontaine working out in front with McElhone. As you'll recall, Bill mentioned those are the two big marksmen for the Islanders. Suter just paws McElhone off the play. Puck wound back around and Hoke and Luke misses to connect with Neuendijk, but up the wing and onside, it is Suter hammering one across the goal mouth wide. McCrimmon ties up his man, LaFontaine, and so Vernon comes out and spins it. Lube has to give chase. I don't think that's a little scary when you're sitting on the bench as a coach and your goalie turns around and shoots it back towards his own net. He, he's not there. Neuendijk's one-on-one -on -one attempt foiled by Conroy. 15-15 to go, first period of play. Calgary's Flames are leading the New York Islanders 1-0. Glad you're with us tonight on ESPN. Our third telecast of NHL hockey in the past four days. And a couple of offensive teams with Pittsburgh and Los Angeles. And defense was the rule yesterday in a 5-4 overtime game in our contest at the Spectrum between the Hartford Whalers and the Philadelphia Flyers. At least that was the structure at the outset. A couple of defensive teams that don't usually pop in as many goals as they did yesterday. Islanders are able to control, and this is Diddick. Hammering when he scores! That iron that you may have heard was at the back. Man, what a shot. We're not going to be able to show it to you from the angle that we saw Dean Everson score against Ron Hextall yesterday, but as soon as that got by Mike Vernon, it reminded me exactly of a goal that we saw yesterday. It's high and tight to Mike Vernon. What a rocket by Diddick. And, you know, he wasn't even skating towards the goal. Look at Vernon. He's looking back for it. It's tough to shoot it that hard when you're not going directly where you're shooting it. And watch Diddick. He is actually going at right angle to the goal. Look at him. There he's going away from the goal. He's still not moved towards the goal, and he just lets it rip right up over Mike Vernon. Overpowering shot, and it's tied at one. Derek King and Brent Sutter get the assist on Diddick's fifth. And the game tied at one. In five seconds, that 20-second power play for Calgary will begin. You know, the guys in the dressing room will be saying, five goals, your fifth goal. How come you don't have more than that with a shot like that? And they'll be kidding him. Bullard able to step by Conroy, feeds over to Zanelli with the gun loaded McGinnis, but it goes the other side to Suter, then to McGinnis, over to Zanelli, three seconds left on the power play, McGinnis to Zanelli once more, gives over to Bullard, looks to Zanelli, nice hop pass Kerr, but play breaks down and the Islanders able to scoop it out of trouble. Trotje trying to step by Joe Mullen. Nicely stripped of the puck by Mullen and on with it to Nelly. Big blast blocked off by Deneen. Now it is Kerr stepping back. From Trotje to Derek King. Back to Trotje. His shot blocked off by Vernon. We had a good angle of that. You can see that one headed toward the right side and almost in for the money. As Mullen has that one denied by Finley. 13 minutes, 20 seconds left in this first period tonight from the Nassau County Coliseum, Uniondale, New York. Islanders come into this one five away from first, but also in that tight Patrick division, five away from the bottom. Puck chopped at, and it came to King. King maneuvers it out to Brent Sutter, then up to Lauer. Diving play made by Natras. Lauer checked to the corner. Brett Hall doing the work on him, and then Sutter comes in, and Natras, and they pin it for a halt to play. Brett Hall with his 25th, and Gerald Diddick with his 5th of the year, and our game is knotted. For some reason or other, Calgary last year was the 21st draw on the road out of 21 teams. They had an impressive team last year. This year, they are 18th. And I have a feeling that that's going to go a great deal upward next year because of the identification that people will have with Calgary because of the Olympics. You know, one of the problems, I think, Mike, is that they've only been in Calgary since 1980. And I think they're still looked upon as a new team. They don't have the identity of the Detroit Red Wings, of the original six who've been around for years. Uh, but I'm still surprised, as good a hockey team as they have had, that they haven't drawn more. Play made back and sailed back out by Merzen. So it is Deneen controlling. And Deneen's pass clicked off King. So Mike Vernon out to handle for the Flames. Seven and a half gone here in this first period of a 1-1 tie. Two other games going on in the NHL tonight. Tom Mees will keep you advised of those. They were trying for Lou, but that broken up by Leiter. And back in is Brent Sutter. 
Worked over once and twice and continually wrapped up along the boards by Roberts. In speaking with the Islanders, they were saying this is how Calgary likes to work us. They like to really pressure us all around the boards and really give us not much of a chance to do anything. Puck played by a high stick and a stoppage of play. One of the Los Angeles Kings said, it seems like when I go back on defense against Calgary, my face is against the glass all night long. The score of our game, 1-1. To play here at the Coliseum in Uniondale. The score 1-1 as Vernon works it along for Tim Hunter. Puck chipped over to Henry and that one blocked away. Lanny McDonald got a piece of it and then it ricocheted to center ice. Lanny McDonald celebrating his 35th birthday today. It is Henry guiding one back up for Basson but he's checked off and here's McDonald flipping one back in. The big plateau ahead and he'd just love to reach it this year is 500 goals. He's 14 away. Billy Smith behind the net, shuttles it off to Diddick, flips back along to Henry. Henry starts it out to Basson. McCrimmon working on defense now, along with Kevin Guy. Basson has a man in front, Henry, he scores! You gotta play a long time in this league till you find yourself as wide open found himself in front of Mike Vernon. Look at Terry Chris. How does that happen? Obviously, a miscommunication between the defensemen. Look at Brad McCrimmon, McCrimmon and Kevin Guy. They're both over there. One of them had to take him. One of, them, one of them had to stay back. That didn't happen. Dale Henry got his own rebound. Vernon was able to stop the first one. The Islanders take the lead. It is McCrimmon oh, and along to Bullard and cleared to center ice. That is a stunning goal for the claim to yield. And here's Kerr attacking with a drive on Vernon. Now it is Mullen stepping ahead. Along with Bullard, gives it right back to Mullen. Mullen a rising shot, and that went into the seats. Well, it's almost like you're standing at the station holding your ticket in the briefcase, and the, and the train just pulls away and you watch. Kind of a helpless feeling for Mike Vernon. He is so long. There are the two defensemen. See them both in red on the right of your screen? Simple miscommunication. One of them has to go over there, and one of them has to take Dale Henry. That's Steve Bozek getting in, as you can see, just a touch late. And Mike Vernon went down on the first one. Had he been able to stand up, he might have had a chance, but pretty tough to ask your goalie to make two of those consecutive rapid-fire saves when that guy is, is all alone in front. We mentioned Lanny McDonald a moment ago. He's not on the ice currently. It is Mullen with Bullard at center. Mullen on the right wing and on the left wing, Tonelli. I have a copy of his recently authored book, and I've seen Bill Clement's name in there several times. Puck ahead with this is Gilbert now. Wedged toward the corner by McCrimmon. And it is punched away by Tonelli. Bullard rifling it back and around to get it is Tonelli. Mullen waiting, but Tonelli was checked off by the aggressive Alan Kerr. Leiter breaks it away as Bullard wanted to move in. And it is LaFontaine rolling back. Nearing the halfway point of this first period. Glad you're with us tonight on ESPN. The Islanders yielded a goal early to Brett Hall, but are now ahead in the game on goals by Diddick and Henry, 2-1. to one. Janine wraps one that is kept by Big Dana Merzen. And now it is Mullen flipping, but that ricocheted off lighter. Gilbert starts back for the Islanders met by Mullen and just lifts it in. They wanted to get a shift change on. They have Brett Sutter working with Makala, and they also bring on Derek King. Now the decision made by Natris to clear it back along, and it went by Colin Patterson, but onside is Brett Hall, and that one off Smith and wide. Otto throws one in front, and that tipped across the goal bounce by Smith. Now it is King, and King tried to shuffle one along that's checked away by Otto, and the Islanders shoot it back down the ice. This will be an icing call to stop the big scoreboard clock as there was offense near Billy Smith, but it's broken by the icing 909 to go in the first 2-1 the Islanders. Chernomaz are the scratches for Calgary and Jim Paplinski has gone to the Canadian Olympic team. Up with this now, the Islanders move it out. Captain Brent Sutter crosses with King and steps through. Hits the post with the shot. 
Sutter trying to follow up, but the Flames are able to step free with it. Colin Patterson giving to Otto and back in. It is Billy Smith sweeping it around. Bill, should we be surprised at some of these chances the Islanders are getting? Here's Hall with one. Oh, what a save by the stickless Billy Smith. I'm not sure if Brett Hall knew he had lost his stick, even though it was Hall that went around behind the net, and I think in a, in a bit of a collision knocked it out of his stick, or out of his hand, rather. If Hall knows he doesn't have his stick, he's got to try and shoot it right on the ice. And as high as he shot it, you'd have to think that Brett Hall, as good a goal scorer as he is, didn't know he didn't have his stick. This is a good rush by Brent Sutter at the other end. He looked as if he was going to pass, and he kept giving them that look, that head look. Finally, he broke by Dana Merzen and dinged it right off the post past Mike Vernon. McGinnis to keep. And it is Lou. Has it taken away by Crom and on to Makala. Shovels for the pump back in by Conroy, and flip back out and the Flames get a break on a bounce off a linesman. Neuendijk quick shot off the pad of Billy Smith. Puck corralled there by Roberts. Gives it back for Guy's drive and Smith answers that one. Roberts ties up with Trotje and the puck cleared. Hammered right back in again by Al McGinnis and Smith quick with that stick behind the net. Slows it for Thomas Janssen. Smith is one of the better goaltenders that has played this game in terms of preventing the stuff attempt. He's very good with the stick, not only in sweeping it at the sides and, and at the edge of his net, but also out in front. Wow, tough to get around Brian Trotsche. Gary Roberts learned that there. And, and Billy Smith, too, Mike, really wasn't at the beginning of the season a guy that a lot of people think thought the Islanders would have to count on. It was going to be Kelly Rooney all year. But when Kelly faltered, now and again, Billy took, the, took his plate and has done a great job for the Islanders. Second oldest player in the National Hockey League, also playing out his option this year. Boy, boy. It is Bullard, shouldered by Gilbert. They continue to battle, and Bullard wanted to free it up to the point, but it is LaFontaine moving to Kerr. Then back to LaFontaine. Can't finesse the defensive suitor, but a chance for Kerr. Wheels one, and that one was banked off Mullen. Mullen able to punch it away from LaFontaine and around to Tonelli. But this is Gilbert, out in front, and a shot by LaFontaine, and the rebound trickled wide. Islanders ahead, 2-1, and are getting some attack. Seven minutes to go, first period. Brad McCrimmon lifts it out of trouble. Smith was saying in a recent interview when asked whether he's going to shoot the puck down the ice and off the glass like Ron Hextall, Bill mentioned his age. Here's Kerr with a shot that deflected to the glass. He said, I'm a little too old for that, but I'd advise any young player coming into the league or any that have been here for a while and aren't too old, they better do it because that's the way the game's going. Oh, what a hit on LaFontaine by Patterson, and Vernon had to hold the side on Kerr's effort. We saw LaFontaine a couple of weeks ago try to do a spin a move that was successful, other than the fact he didn't score on it, and it happened from that very spot. He tried to dash back out front. That time Colin Patterson was coming in half level LaFontaine, but he has, he's become a more sturdy player. You know that, Mike, each year that he's been in the league, and Terry Simpson now has him playing a more physical style of hockey. Not that he, he is a, a rough player out there, but at certain times, Pat LaFontaine now knows, having played for Terry Simpson, that he has to play a physical game, and a lot of it he learned from watching his great teammate, Brian Trottier. Recent game this weekend, he and Kelly Kissio were playing it physically all night long. A couple of mighty mites just really hammering at one another. Puck tipped out. Flames try to send further, but it is advanced the other way by Didick, and then flipped back in by Merzen, who sprawled. Brent Sutter has King in motion to his left. Moves in and gives it back to Crom for a shot that is blocked away, and then Vernon steps out, but Didick is waiting. Didick fires one, and that one is trapped by Vernon. Five minutes, 55 seconds to go in the first. Hull for Calgary, Didick and Henry for the Islanders. Delivery, and they shoot the puck harder than they've ever, ever shot it in their entire careers, and they end up scoring on it. Players say, man, why don't you shoot it like that all the time? Simple fact is, they can't. Just a matter of physical skill. Is that it? No, it's a matter of just teeing it. It's like that drive. It's like that 340-yard drive that you happen to hit the one time in, the, in your 10th year. Well, okay, the 240-yard drive. Okay. Whatever. Here is Neuendijk moving to the front. But it's chased to the corner, and now it is Lube centering. Billy Smith scoops it for Crutchay. 
were mentioning Diddick. He was a first round draft pick of the Islanders and we mentioned their draft choices only because few teams in the league can put as many of their own picks in the lineup as the Islanders tonight out of 20 men on the roster 16 for Islanders draft choices. This is Leiter starting back in the final five minutes of this first period. We hope you're enjoying this one. As Leiter moves through, the play made back over to Fasten. Fasten had to duel with McCrimmon, and it's sent along for Tim Hunter. Hunter has Lanny McDonald in stride and hands to him. McDonald trying to get by Deneen. Puck knocked loose by Leiter, and we get a stoppage of play. And now, Tim Hunter pawing at Bakota. It was Bakota that took Hunter down, though, coming back into the zone. They went down on a heap right in front of Billy Smith. And when they got up, Bakota made a motion to drop his gloves. Hunter didn't go for it, kind of lulled Bakota into a, into a second of relaxation, and then drilled him with a straight left. The setup. You know, if they ever introduced the sport of ice boxing into the Olympics, I think, <laughs> I think Hunter would be one of Canada's representatives, wouldn't he? Ice boxing. I like that. In bare feet. Oh, to make yeah. it more interesting. Kickboxing on ice. Here they are, matched up again. But Tim, Tim Hunter won't deny a challenge a second time. If Bakota wants him, he'll be able to get him. And that's how close they are for the start of this. Basson on the face-off test with Bozak. And now Basson waved, and so Hen um, yes, Henry will come in as Bozak wins. Sutter flips, and turning to get it is Leiter. Leiter, with his team ahead in the game, 2-1, to one, connects to Henry, then on from Deneen, working it on to Bakota, who drops for Basson. It'll be Henry moving in, but their first is Vernon. Henry anticipated well and put that one right in front. McDonald hit hard by Bakota. He didn't see him coming at all. I'm trying to figure out why. He was almost coming in a straight line where Lanny was trying to pass it, but did he ever hit him? Going back for this now as McCrimmon brushes it away from Henry. That's got to be the most solid hit I think we've had in the first 16 minutes of this game, and we would expect that the more solid hit just from reputation would have come from the team in red. LaFontaine plays it in deep. McCrimmon took him to the boards, and now it is McDonald, but away from that. Penalty coming up. It'll be interference with 3.48 to go in the first period. Islanders have the lead. The NHL in the second period. Winnipeg leads Quebec 3 2 on a goal by Dave Ellett. And just underway, Buffalo and St. Louis. No score early first period. Let's get back to Long Island. Mike and Bill. Power play about to heat up for the Islanders for the second time in the game. In the season series, both teams have a win at home, and the Islanders on the power play against Calgary are 2 for 11, this being their 12th effort. Joel Otto for the faceoff opposite Pat LaFontaine. Won by LaFontaine, played by Finley, over to Diddick. Diddick controls and passes to Trache. Oh, taking some heat at the front of the net is LaFontaine being worked over by Natras and now being hit by Merzen. Finley fires. Score! Could be Trache on the tip. Three to one, the Islanders. And it might be Trache on the tip. But we talked about Pat LaFontaine playing a more physical game. He knocked Dana Merzen right on his face in front of the net giving away about 25 pounds and ended up all alone screening Mike Vernon. Good working around by the Islanders. The Flames are forcing. There's the shot. See Merzen go down. See who's standing. Pat LaFontaine is still standing. And Dana Merzen had to sit on his knees or at least remain on the ice kneeling. It was Pat LaFontaine that deflected it after he'd actually pushed Merzen to the ice. What did he earn that one? His 34th of the season. And the Islanders are ahead in the game, 3-1. to one. Now moving back up is John Tonelli. Tonelli tried to feed in front, but Bullard was just muscled off by Conroy, and the net became dislodged as Bullard was ridden into it. Islanders' goal is 20th of the season. Boyd, whatever. Did I just write the numbers down? Yeah. Oh, it is Trotje who gets the goal. Well, they gave it to Trotje, but did it not look to you as if LaFontaine had deflected? I thought, it was, honestly, I thought there were two deflections there. I really I think, think LaFontaine got the second one, and... 
Tronche. So we'll make that Tronche 20th until we hear differently. Bit of a homecoming for Joe Mullen, who grew up in Hell's Kitchen district of New York City. There's Brian Tronche. Why, when you think of the Islanders, it's difficult not to think of Brian Tronche. So many great years here. There's Mullen trying to hammer one around, but is ridden off by Gilbert, and the play made to LaFontaine. Passes on to Janssen. Janssen moves toward Guy. Once Kerr, who was able to just hack one, that Joe Mullen will go in deep to play. with the shoulder of Gilbert. Islanders are playing the body well in this game. Following through, and there's a giveaway, and Kerr fired it wide. Tonelli flips. Bullard tries to take, but it is punched away by Janssen. And as emotional as Terry Chris is, two minutes and 30 seconds away, could be a lot of chatter down below. Offside pass. A lot of chatter down below. Here's Pat LaFontaine. We think just scored, but it doesn't matter if you're a New York Islander and you're in the situation the Islanders are in. In this Patrick division, it doesn't really matter who scores them at this time of year. And the thing that is so interesting about the Patrick division is, I think that right down the wire, we will have teams in the last couple of weeks that have a shot for first place and also have a shot at being out of the playoffs. It's going to be that tight. Birthday boy, Lanny King McDonald. He is an automatic Hall of Famer in my mind and a guy that should make the off-ice Hall of Fame too. Name a charity. And Lanny McDonald, I think, has been involved in it at one point in, in his career. It was once well said, too, Bill, I think a few seasons back, that if you're going to send a van out to do goodwill work for the sport of hockey, and as it's played in the NHL, that Lanny McDonald would be in the front seat next to the driver. Now, knowing Lanny, he'd probably be driving it, too. <laughs> you know that? Trache got away from Sutter's check, what? Right? He said, give the driver the day off. I'll take care of his job, too. He really is that kind of guy. He's uh, larger than life when it comes to his off-ice activities to try and help people. I've got a question sometime tonight about uh, an incident in the locker room. He details in his book uh, trying to break up another player, getting to laugh, but that's later on. Here comes Trache, passes on to Makala, then along to Trache, and it is lost to Sutter, and he was tripped up with Trache, so it'll be a power a minute and 33 seconds to go in the first period. Islanders have the lead at 3-1. to one. There's Mike Vernon. He and his number one ranked flames of the National Hockey League could find themselves in a bit of a bind here. Gary Roberts has just gone off for tripping. And this gives the New York Islanders another power play. We're down to a minute and 33 to go. The Islanders already lead 3-1. to one. Natra is able to clear. It gives us a chance to set the Islanders for you on the power play. They'll use Diddick one-point position, and on the opposite side, they'll be going with the rookie, Finley. It is Sutter moving ahead. He has Lauer on one wing, and the man with the puck, Kerr, or rather, King, on the other. Here is Sutter, and he had Lauer all alone and saw him, but couldn't get it through Natras. And again, an Islander was at the front of the goal. This time, Calgary unharmed by it. A minute to go in the first period. Three to one. The Islanders are ahead. The pass comes over to Diddick. Fires one. Pad stop. Vernon. Rebound in front. Big football pile up, and we get a stoppage of play. Right. Brent Sutter didn't get a second chance at that one, did he? We've seen a goal with one of the Islanders standing so alone in front of the net, he was able to get his own rebound. But more times than not, that kind of clearing happens, especially on the power play. The defensemen back there are just throwing bodies around left and right. During the intermission, we will hear another in the series of rewind. Gee, those are entertaining. Men from the past in the NHL spinning some old stories. And Gordy Howe will be along on Rewind. A closer look at this impressive Calgary Flames unit that is leading in its division by three points over Edmonton. And, of course, as always, Tom Meese and the Bud Light scoreboard. Lighter controlling with 45 seconds to go. Across now to Janssen. Then Makala. Makala watched by Bozek. Back to Janssen. Then over to Leiter. What a sparring match in front as the shot is just snatched out of the air by Vernon. I like 
what the Islanders are doing on this power play. They've got a, an umbrella set up with Mackel on one side, Thomas Janssen right dead center, and Leiter over on this side. Both of the Flames defenders committed to the far side of the umbrella. That left this man open, open enough to move in. And you can see, you can see room on that side, couldn't you? Yeah. I think Leiter had a little more room up high, but it's a, it's a tough shot to execute. You've got to be a sniper to be able to blast it from there right up over Mike Vernon's shoulder. Phil, did you have to play the front on the power play at any time in your career? Right at the front door. I never played the power play in my career. <laughs> I can't remember playing it once. I was just going to ask you about the punishment that those guys are taking there. And those are from big men in front. Dana Merzen when he's leaning on you. But, of course, you saw the leverage of LaFontaine when the goal was scored a moment ago. Here's a play in front. LaFontaine scores! Four to one, the Islanders. simply owning the front of the net in spite of the fact that two guys twice his size, Rick Nadras and Dana Merzen, are out there trying to take care of him. He gets loose behind Nadras this time. You can see Nadras trying to get back into the play. Dana Merzen had committed to the corner. Nadras had sagged way over to this side. We'll see if we can get a look in front of the net. Merzen, Nadras, both on the right. You see all the flames in red on the right? You can't be that far over to one side. You have to protect that outside post as well. LaFontaine knows that. He played it well. Islanders have a commanding lead. Here we go. We're at the end of the first period now. Four seconds to go. Much will be said at one end in the locker room. Perhaps much at the other, but a lot of self-encouragement, a real confidence builder for the Islanders here. You bet. And I know that Terry Crisp is going to be all over the guys in red for, if nothing else, the mental mistakes. A couple of these goals, players were left wide open in front of Mike Vernon. The Islanders have outshot the Flames in the first period, 18 to 6. They lead in the game, 4 to 1. February 1st to the Devils, just that would confront them on the road. Well, I think you come together as a team more than anything else. Uh, you know, roommate, uh, you you know, you're there sharing the bed, the room, sharing the bed, the room together. And, uh, you're going out to dinner all the time, and uh, you know, you just living together as a team. The toughest thing is going to be trying to stay mentally uh, ready for for every game this month. Um, I think that's going to be the toughest challenge, especially when we come down. I mean, next week we're going to be we got five more games before we get a chance to go home and then we go right back on the road again so next uh next five games i think are going to be the telltale story the monstrous road trip is a modern era record of 11 games in 11 different cities the flames have proven they're almost as comfortable on the road though as they are at home compiling the league's best record as the visiting team despite a sluggish two and three start on their current excursion some may think the flames are on a downer but head coach terry chris refuses to take a negative viewpoint whether you say negatives or not, because we agreed upon this that when we started this 11-game road trip, there was nothing negative about it. We were going to keep it that way. We wouldn't dwell on it, and everything we did was going to be in a positive vein and a positive attitude. We've kept it that way, so I'm not about to break the chain. In, in general, it, it's going to be a tough kind. It's going to be a very good test for us, and I think that uh, you look around the NHL, and if there's any team that you would want to, to go on the road, I think it's the Calgary Flames because of their past record on the road. And, you know, we, we've been playing well on the road, and we're, we're a team that really, uh, I think we simplify the game on the road. That's why we have the good success. And when the bus pulls out of the Nassau Coliseum parking lot tonight, six games of the Odyssey will be history, and the Flames will be more than halfway home again. And that guy you heard screaming in the background at the very end of the piece, that was Terry Crisp reading the riot act between periods because the Flames, my friends, are being doused 4-1 to one by the New York Islanders. You know, they lost the first two games of this mammoth road trip by an aggregate score of 14-1. to one. And they won two and then lost in overtime tilt in Washington. But tonight, it's the Islanders 4 and Calgary 1. And the Bud Light Hockey News, including our scoreboard, comes your way next as the NHL tonight continues from Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. Makes no mistake, does Mr. Shepard. It is Buffalo 1 and St. Louis nothing in the first period at St. Louis. And, of course, our score after 1, the Calgary Flames trailing the New York Islanders by a score of 4-1. to one. Mike Emmerich and Bill Clement standing by for the second period of action. The NHL tonight continues. 
in the goal for the United States. Bud Light's own Spuds McKenzie. His name is Bud McKenzie. Yeah. And go for the USA. There's no denying Spud celebrates with Bud Light. He knows everything else is just the light. This Bud Light is out of sight, my little Spud Skin. Go, Spud, go! Hey! Go, Spud, go! 25 attempts by the Islanders. Only two were steered wide by the Flames. Incredible. Shot total alone impressive at 18 to 6. Now, should we expect more from Calgary defensively than this, or We not? should expect something from them. I mean, they are the 12th-ranked uh, team defensively in the NHL. That's the bottom half. So they are capable of defensive lapses, but, but that was pretty atrocious defense. And they weren't making contact. They got out hit 11-5. to 5. All of those signs, to me, lead to the fact that they weren't quite sharp enough mentally. They weren't psyched up to play this hockey game the way they should have been. We've seen some games this year that have changed from one period to the next. See if that develops here as Conroy shuffles one back in deep. In case you're just joining us, we're from the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York, where McAuliffe fires one that is blocked off by the close checking of Roberts. Back for Conroy, and his shot whistled wide. Puck kept along by Janssen. Took a hit from Roberts, but it is Makala moving it further. Trache slotted one, but that picked up by Lube. Score of our game here at the Nassau Coliseum is 4-1 to one in favor of the New York Islanders over the Calgary Flames as a shot by McCrimmon was tipped away. Lube got a piece of that. Stepping away with it is Thomas Janssen. Janssen winding one on to Makala that is tipped away from the reach of Trache. Suter and Natras, the defense pair for Terry Crisp's Calgary Flames. John Tonelli moving along, and that one is sent on Conroy. Now Tonelli moves in. One-time Islander shuffles one off that comes to Suter for a shot, and that grabbed by Smith, and then Tonelli was skating by, and gently Smith went down to the ice. Two appeared to have a sort of a friendly exchange, if there was one. Calgary has made a change in goal. First of all, a look at the Billy Smith save at the other end. John Tonelli comes right through and says hello to an old teammate. Doug Datswell is one of several splendid goalies to come from Cornell. Along with Hayward, Elliott, Dryden, names from the past that have emerged from Cornell to the National Hockey League. And he has only started one of the last 11 games for Calgary. Vernon carries the load, and that much seems to be an assumption. Merzen stepping in, and Merzen's pass couldn't be reached by Tonelli. Out with it comes Kerr. Two on one with LaFontaine. Fires wide. Puck kept by Leiter, and that on goal, and that's well turned that away. Gilbert behind. LaFontaine can't get to the front. Play taken by Merzen. Merzen's pass comes along to Mullen, and Mullen checked by Deneen, but forces it in on Billy Smith. 18 minutes to go, second period of play. Alan Kerr drops, LaFontaine pokes it through, but reading that play and bringing it back out is Otto. Crisp pass wound up going off Hall, and is taken by the goaltender, Billy Smith. Weeps it back along, punched from Deneen. Hall tried to feed one further, but instead this is Deneen pass skips away too far for the reach of LaFontaine and it's McInnes. Colin Patterson's pass is cut off by Kerr and Kerr steps back in ducked most of the check but lost control of the puck. Deneen puts it in on Datswell. Datswell comes from Scarborough Ontario 5'10 175 pounds and 24 years of age. And like many goaltenders in the NHL, he played in the American League at Moncton. Otto, what a quick shot! And Billy Smith answering in goal. Such quickness for a guy that, well, maybe we're, we just make the assumption that big guys don't go quickly, but well, what is Otto? Talk to Mario Lemieux about that. Yeah, uh, but, it, but it's true. In general, you, act, you give away some mobility and, and when you're that big. And Joel Otto, if he could get the puck up quickly, in close, could be a big scorer. He hasn't had the kind of season he had last year. He's only got six goals this year, but he's still a force out there. When push comes to shove, you really want him on your side. Play continues as Brad McCrimmon hands to Sutter, but that pass was too far for Lanny McDonald. Con 
Nemroid goes back. Icing is waved off on this play, and a drive by Sutter, or Suter, rather, hit off the post, loose puck in front, and cleared away. Suter tries once more, but this one is brought out by Basson. Magically, just poke checked away from him. And we get a whistle and stoppage of play, a penalty being assessed by Andy Van Helleman, just getting up as Bozak, and it appears a foul has been called on the Islanders. Power play to begin with the Flames trailing by three. Smith, well, I'm not sure he did make the save. It looked as if it might have chopped off the, the side of the net. Brad Lauer has been called for hooking. Is that the penalty there? Boy, starting to call it pretty tight right now. There sits Brad Lauer. Well, if the Islanders take penalties tonight, that might be the Flames' only way to get back into it. They haven't shown the intensity that the Islanders have. They have the top-ranked power play in the National Hockey League. Brett Paul moves it on to Tonelli. Deneen chops at him. Tonelli still controlling. Close quarters pass to Hoken Loop, then back to Suter. Pass tipped by Trotje and sent to the front by Hall, but it must be played again by Loop. This is Gary Suter. From Madison, Wisconsin to Loop, then back to Suter once more. Hurried over to Hall. Shot stick save, Billy Smith. Cut clear. Nice play by Suter, but he was unable to hold it in. Brought it back over the blue line from center ice, and offside was called. You know, we, we talk about, oftentimes Gretzky is mentioned as a guy who sees all over the ice, and sometimes that's mentioned also on Calgary's power play, how well they see as we get a chance to see that shot by Hall that Billy Smith blocked. They have so many players that see the ice well, Mike. Talk about hand-eye coordination. Gary Suter always has his head up. He seems to know where everybody is, and we talk about seeing the ice. To try and put it in street terms, imagine someone standing in front of you about three feet away talking to you, and you're looking at him, concentrating on what he's doing, and something going on behind him, 10 or 15 feet behind him, whatever it is, something moving, try to see that at the same time, and something perhaps 10 or 15 feet even further behind that person or that group of people happening, and trying to see everything that's going on and understanding everything that's going on at the same time. The guys that see the ice well have that depth of field. They can see everything, no matter if it's close or far. This play is worked back along by Loop. Loop pivoting, works it back, and the play made back over to Suter. You know, I was just noticing there while they were playing the periphery that the, the Flames didn't have anyone inside the four-man defensive box. We'll ask a question in a moment. Here's a try at the front by Neuendijk, and the rebound shot wide by Loop. And we get a stoppage of play as the puck wound up on the back of the goal. Should we always assume that the idea is to get a guy right in there inside the four-man defensive box for the uh, offense at the front of the net or not? Not necessarily. You see where Neuendijk is? This is him getting the puck. They like to move to him beside the net. He will either try and dance out in front and jam it by Billy Smith or try and hit Hawk and Lube, who usually stands off the other side. Uh, certain teams like to plunk a guy in front and just direct the puck at the net. Other teams will try and move quickly in and out of that area. The Flames are one of those ladder teams. They'll move in and out of it, try and sneak the puck into Neuendijk, and then he can either pass off or dance out in front himself. Flames have made a change. They still have a couple of good point men out there, and Al McGinnis, who can really bring it, and Pat McCrimmon. He sure can. Up until uh, recently, McGinnis was playing with Gary Suter on the point, uh, on defense on the power play, but Terry Chris has mixed it up. Now he has really two strong pairs back there. He's got Brad McCrimmon now with McGinnis, and he mixes it up by putting Brett Hull when he's in uniform out there with, with Gary Suter. Just seen a two-line pass out of the defensive zone. Obviously, you have to have some restrictions for those of you just learning the game and, and how far ahead you can pass it. Otherwise, a team would station someone way down the ice, and, and then the defensive team would have to station someone there, too. And so for purposes of keeping some uh, zone coverage in the game, or the pass from outside or inside the defensive zone across the red line is not it's easy to understand if you look at the red line as a blue line if the puck is passed from inside the defensive zone the red line is nothing more than the attacking blue line you can't precede the puck over that red line if the passes come from inside your zone this is al mcginnis lining it up behind eight seconds left on the power play to the flames which has produced nothing in comes kerr that's well deep in his cage and the puck is behind the net where he reaches out to just flick it away. Otto moving it back up through Bullard and along to Joe Mullen with Bullard breaking. Mullen moves and jams one wide. And then Bullard locked up with Billy Smith as the puck cleared to McGinnis. Winds up and fires one. That ricocheted off Otto. And here's Kerr looking ahead 
for Lauer, and now carrying on himself. Feeds to Lauer, but the play was offside. 13.53 to go, second period. We hope you're enjoying this one tonight from the Nassau Coliseum, 4-1 Islanders. Dodge Shadow ES. When you look at its 60 standard features, its turbocharged engine, its 770 protection plan, when you consider the fact that the Shadow ES is a better value, almost $700 less than the Chevy Cavalier C24, you'll agree, when it comes to outstanding value, it's gotta be a Dodge. And with $500 cash back, you've now got an even better value. You know, we've mentioned that Mike Bossy is absent from the Islanders lineup. Jamie McCowan, defenseman who had 40 points last year, has been missing all year from the Calgary lineup, too. It's so easy to forget about those men that don't play at all in the course of the season. Here is Makota with a shot that is steered away by Datswell, and Lanny McDonald picks it up. 13.30 to go second period. In case you're just joining us, this is our telecast on ESPN from the Nassau Coliseum. In the second period of our game, Calgary trailing the Islanders by a count of 4-1. to Murs in a shot. That blocked away by Bakota, who gives him a shoulder to boot, and on with it comes Henry. Henry moving in. Pass came back to him, but then it is rocketed around the far side by Tim Hunter and back down. No icing call on this. Some of the fans boo that, as moving with it is Didick. The league is becoming looser on uh, on icing calls now. They want the game to continue to speed, and in mid-year here, the linesmen are allowing a lot more to go without an icing call. Here's Makala. Pass in front, blocked away by a sprawling McCrimmon. Brian Trache trying to shake from McCrimmon. Backhander, good save made by Dadswell, and the rebound couldn't be converted by Henry. Henry to the corner, defended by Merzen. Puck pops for the centering pass that went under Trotje, sticking back down. Billy Smith tends this one in the Islander goal. Didick Henry, Trotje, and LaFontaine. The Islander goals, in case you're just joining us, Brett Hall had the first goal of the game for Calgary. Puck flipped off the glove of Brett Sutter. Followed up, though, by Makala. Makala duels with McCrimmon, and the shot shoveled off of Dadswell by Derek King. King tests with Patterson. Puck tipped by Conroy. Conroy in front, and it was one-handedly deflected wide by Brent Sutter. Kept by Lauer. Shouldered by Patterson. And Suter clears back out. Joel Otto steps ahead. Drops it off to Hull. A drive and a stick save by Billy Smith. Sutter clears off Suter. It's chopped back in deep by Roberts. So Deneen with 11 and a half to go in the second period, and his team ahead in the game, four to one. Saw a passing play not click. Suter back now to Lube. Lube up the wing, and it's Al McGinnis. Finesse to Lube, and just arriving in time to break it up was Brent Sutter. You know, Neuendijk was in all alone as well. I don't know if Lube knew he had him to his side. If Lube controls, he could shoot or pass to Neuendijk. It was a two on none situation. Lube once more, and the shot cradled by Billy Smith. Midway in the second period. Islanders lead by three. Hoken Lube is number 12 in red for the Calgary Flames. He passes to Al McInnes and then breaks for the net. But the pass is just a little behind him. You could see just going out of the right of your screen there was Joey Neuendijk. He was in all alone. Here's Gilbert in stride. Alan McGinnis leaning on him. And Gilbert clips one in front. And from his knees, Dadwell is able to turn to Guy. Then on to Mullen. Mullen's pass is tipped by Buller to Tonelli. Gets back, gets back. Tonelli shot off the glass. And Al McGinnis controls for Calgary. You saw in that feature between the first and second periods that the Flames are on this long road trip. A shot by Kerr blocked down in front. This is the sixth game of it. They lost 9-0 at Winnipeg. 5-1 at Detroit then had two wins, one at Los Angeles 5-2 and at Philadelphia 3-2 before losing in overtime to Washington 5-4. And this is only halfway. They go on to the Rangers tomorrow, then St. Louis, Chicago, Vancouver, Edmonton. Then they're home for 10 of the last 16, and that's the end of the season. This is Diddick. 
centers one, and it's cut off by Tonelli and spun back out to Bozek. Bozek eyed up by Finley, able to turn him, and Bozek shoveled one. Another save by Billy Smith on Tonelli. Boy, what a great job by Smith. He came out to force Bozek's hand. Super move by Bozek to get by Finley. He gave him the fade to the inside and then moved to the outside, but Smith was there. Lest there be any doubt, the old man still has her, doesn't he? You bet he does. College basketball doubleheader coming up on ESPN tomorrow. At 8 p.m. is Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, St. John's at Syracuse. Followed two hours later by Missouri at Iowa State. Hockey or basketball, your spot is ESPN. Fans talking it up here. They have seen an Islander explosion in the first period. We're halfway through the second. Their team ahead of the Calgary Flames, 4-1. to one. Natras moving ahead and drops one. Guided away by Tim Hunter, but taken by Deneen. And cleared for Merzen. Right after him is Basson. Puck lifted to Lanny McDonald. Up the wing now to Bozak for a drive. Blocked away by Smith. Followed up by McDonald. Pinching is Merzen. Off Hunter. Chopped from Deneen. The battle between Deneen and Bozak continued with Bozak moving away. Sets up McDonald. Quick wrist shot is blocked away by Derek Smith. Now out in front, a shot blocked off and held by Billy Smith. Which I didn't know Philadelphia had made a trade to bring Derek Smith here. <laughs> Derek King was who I was thinking, and Billy Smith in the goal. Boy, the Flames defensemen certainly aren't reluctant to get in deep. That's Dana Merza in there pressing. You know, you know this line that Calgary has out there, there's 19, Tim Hunter in front, with Steve Bozek and Lanny McDonald. That would be considered their fourth line. They have worked the hardest in this hockey game so far, and Terry Chris spots that immediately with the help of his, his assistants. He's got Pierre Paget with the headset on the bench. And they will play. They will play more regularly than some other uh, lines that he has set up tonight simply because they're working hard. That is something that before the game the Flames knew, Mike, they had to do to beat the Auditors, and it just didn't happen in the first. I talked to Pierre Paget. I said, what about the Auditors? He said, they work real hard. We have to be prepared to play them on a work level. And they just weren't in the first period. Trache on the tie-up with Otto, and the puck swung back out by Finley. Going back to get it is Suter. You know, I guess we just sit up here and we watch and we just assume that automatically teams are prepared because the game is going to start at a certain time and it's just going to happen. But it's not like a light switch, huh? Here's one sent in front for Patterson. Finessed over for a backhander and getting a piece of that was Billy Smith off Brett Hall. The battle continues. Otto there and Andy Van Helleman has spotted a penalty. some feistiness here from the Flames being a bit frustrated by that first period but none comes here power play to come up to Calgary trailing 4-1 nice against the Rangers Gary Suter controlling on this third power play Hall's shot is tipped away by Kerr Tonelli leaned on by Deneen tries to fight it loose for Neuendijk out to challenge Smith Neuendijk behind Flips it off for Tonelli. Kerr and Sutter watching. Deneen and Conroy, the defense for the shorthanded Islanders. Puck comes up to Brent Sutter. Checked, though, by Lou. Five players and freight training the whole bunch was Neuendijk. Puck kicked back over to Hall. Trying to get away from Sutter, he put one in front that was off Neuendijk and wide. Tonelli jams it loose from Sutter. Lou right back for Tonelli. Points it to Hall. Keeps it moving to Tonelli. A minute 10 power play. Back over to Suter. Then Hall. Then Tonelli. Hall again. Deflected but saved by Smith. And Kerr comes in with an extra measure on Neuendijk. You know, the Flames do so many things well on their power play. Three times so far on this power play, Mike, they lost the puck 
in the offensive zone and forecheck their way back into possession of the puck. And in watching Gary Suter back on defense, one of the things that he does so successfully to buy himself time, he's wearing number 20, dressed in red. So watch for this. Every time he gets the puck just about back on the point, he winds up with a with a, a half wind up like he's going to shoot. And most times that freezes everybody. But he very seldom follows through with it. He is capable of it. If he's got somebody in front, he, he just lets it rip. But watch his head. Always up looking around, even when he does his wind up. See if the puck comes back to him. He's matched up with Al McGinnis on the points, but the Islanders will force things here. And puck just rather idly given up, it seems. Mullen now behind to Suter. And Otto buries Gilbert, and that will be the fourth interference call in this game. Well, there are some that call interference calls the lazy man's penalty. And in this particular case, all the way back, Greg Gilbert wasn't, he wasn't really doing much. Watch right in dead center of your screen. There's the white and there's the red. Now you tell me what that's all about. That counts as cardinal sin when you're on the power play and it's back in that end. Well, I'll tell you what. The puck was protected. Gilbert wasn't doing anything to get in the way. Joel Otto is usually the, the thinking man's kind of player. Mentioned the fourth interference call of this game. There have been seven calls, all minors, and that's the third interference call on Calgary. So the two teams will go a man short for 50 seconds, and that'll be one minute and 10 seconds of the Islanders' fourth power play, barring any further penalty calls. It is Gary Suter starting ahead with it. Suter pulls away from Makala, moves on to knee. Play is offside going in. Buck must precede members of the attacking team over that blue line. Steve Bozek, he's one of the players that really taxis in and out of this lineup. We talked about the depth that the Calgary Flames have. I was in Calgary a few weeks ago, and out of the lineup that particular night, they weren't injured. As a fifth line were Perry Berezan, Fred Hull, and that man we just saw, Steve Bozak. There's John Tonelli. He's in the lineup most of the time. But that was the fifth line. There are teams in the NHL that would love to have a line like that as a third line. That's how strong the Flames are up front. Well, the ex-devil, Rich Chernomaz, was called up today and scratched. But he'd just like to keep that extra insurance around, apparently. Buck jammed right back out again. The Flames scratched four players from the roster. And they have one playing for the Canadian Olympic team, that's Jim Poplinski. Here's Suter moving ahead. Pass clicked off Bozak and will be retrieved by Mikko Makala. Six and a half minutes to go in this second period. Four to one in favor of the Islanders. Eight seconds from now, it will be an Islander power play of a minute and ten seconds duration to begin. Janssen handing over to Conroy. Slides it to Makala. And Makala just flips it in to McGinnis. Now the power play has begun to the Islanders. McGinnis just cruising and chewing up some time and making them chase it. Shift change on now for Calgary with this penalty killing to begin. It is Merzen back with Natras and up front Neuendijk along with Roberts. Makala trying to turn Merzen out front. LaFontaine scores! Another power play goal. Five to one. simply beats Dana Merzen wide to the outside and he mesmerizes everybody else. Everybody was turned to watch Miko Makala, who was sneaking in behind. The last guy you'd want to have wide open in the slot, Pat LaFontaine. Watch the pass. Roberts is back, Natras is back, Merzen is back, three reds back. LaFontaine cruises in. That's an easy goal. Nobody made LaFontaine pay the price. And when Pat LaFontaine gets a wide open there, you saw what happened. It's 5-1 Islanders. What do you think he was writing? Tell the boys to toughen up next practice, and I'm going to give them some drills to show them how. All right, Bakota back, hammered by Lanny McDonald. And the play sent back up by Leiter. Dadswell comes out. First one there is Basson, and that went through Merzen, thrown behind by Hunter. Well, the problems the Flames are having aren't drawing board problems. But when you don't have the concentration level there, you start breaking down. It, it's not the X's and O's. It's a simple matter of preparation. 
Buck tipped out by Natras. Hunter and forced from him by Henry. Now Hunter and Bacota will go. Hunter has been in a bunch. Bacota probably too, but not at this level. And you know, that this is the only, this is the next time since I said, if Bacota wants him, Hunter won't turn him down this time. But Bacota went to him in such an assertive way. Tim Hunter couldn't have avoided fighting him that time. Bacota went right to him. He has been trying to challenge him all night. Likely be five minute majors, and they come here in the latter stages of the second period, which sees the Islanders in command five to one. I have never seen Fakota fight, but I can certainly tell you that he's one strong boy. He took Tim Hunter, turned him around, and just about tipped him over the boards into the Islanders' bench. 6'2, 195. He's 21 from Saskatoon and played last year in the Western Hockey League in Spokane. Fakota. Hunter both got fighting majors as we guessed at 14:51. Didick a good hard drive and a pass saved by Dadswell. Puck hand passed ahead by Bullard to Tonelli and that will stop things. You know it probably wouldn't take Fakota long to get the Islanders major penalties for fighting up. We had done a you had done a little study on that and it figured that the Islanders trailed all 21 teams. They were in last place in majors for fighting in the NHL and in overall penalty minutes as well. You may recall uh, those of you who are watching our game recently in Detroit with Chicago that Detroit and Chicago were two of the top three and they still are Boston is at the top and the bottom three have been for some time the Rangers the Islanders and Hartford until most recently shot went and after it goes Gilbert drops it but McGinnis is there in the final four and a half minutes of the second period play made out now to Bullard Bullard moving in and firing one that was tipped by Smith wide. McKinnis with a drive. That one up high. Scramble, but emerging with it is Conroy. Joe Mullen is there. Taps it back to Guy. Double team, though, by Kerr and LaFontaine. Puck whips further to Tonelli. Gives in the slot to McGinnis. Score! Al McGinnis with his typical blazer. And the Flames get their second goal of the game. people's opinions has the hardest shot from the, the defense in the National Hockey League and this time he's actually moving in heading toward Billy Smith that has to be a scary situation to be in for Billy Smith what a rocket from Al McInnes it closes it to 5-2 McInnes knows he's got a guy going down when McKinnis and Suter are back on defense, that's the element they give the Flames that no, no other team in the NHL has, I don't think. They both are capable of moving in and doing the transition from pass to shot or shot to pass with their heads up. That time, McKinnis knew the guy was coming down in front of him. He still shot it over him and went high to Billy Smith's left side and scored. 18th of the year for McKinnis, and his team is back to within three. It is Lou rolling it back ahead, and on with it comes Neuendijk. Janssen is the defenseman. Nice sweet play by Makala. And it is Hulk and Lube having to go back for it. Slides it to McCrimmon. And Janssen will start back, and it's wound back in. McCrimmon started the night. We're not certain of the plus-minus on this evening, but he started the night at a plus-30. That's second best in the league. Only to Raymond Bork of Boston, who is a plus 32. Well, they go eye to eye, Janssen and Roberts, but are parted. Plus and minus uh, may be a vague statistic to some of you. It's, it's just computed on the basis of even strength goals, whether you're on for more than, than you're on for goals against. There's Al McGinnis. You know, when he came into this league, he was a one-dimensional player. He really didn't understand how to play defense at all. He basically got by in junior with his big cannon. He scored a lot of points as a junior hockey player in Canada. But over the years, over the last couple of years especially, he has become a real strong two-way player. He's still not as good defensively as he is offensively, but he's not a liability. He was at one time when he came into this league, but he sure makes up for it now with better defensive play and excellent offensive play. Brent Sutter, Lanny McDonald tripped up, and on that one, Sutter will go. So the Flames will have a chance to put their number one power play into action again. They trail in the game 5-2. to two. 
The mid-size Dodge Dakota. With new package discounts to save you up to $1,500. Plus cash back savings of $500 more. When it's gotta be right, it's gotta be a Dodge. Dodge Ram 100, 88.53. The best full-size pickup buy in America. Now with 750 cash back. When it's got to be right, it's got to be a Dodge. Not much question about this call to Brent Sutter. He tripped up Lanny McDonald rather blatant and right in front of Andy Van Helleman. There it is. <laughs> So Sutter sits, fourth power play of the game for Calgary. And that one flipped right in on goal. Mike Bullard able to get it back to McInnes. Fakes the drive, but hands to Bullard. At the front is Neuendijk. Play back to McInnes, who fakes, then gives once more to Bullard. Hurries it to Suter. Drive! Oh, ricocheted on Smith, and then popped up, but is worked back along, though the Flames can keep. McInnes fires one that is deflected out of play by Trache. Smith or not. When it comes from either of the points, from Suter or McInnes, good pass by Bullard right through the box. He found a seam and was able to get Gary Suter on this side. Billy Smith doesn't have a clue where it is. But he got some help coming back in. They pass the puck so well. That's another key to the, to the flame success on the power play. They pass it so well. They've got so many guys with good hands. We talked about their ability to see the ice. They've got great shooters. And look at Suter. He knows when to pinch in. Bullard was coming out, so Suter simply pinched in. There's another thing I haven't mentioned, though. They're well coached on the power play. Suter rolls this along to Bullard. And then back to McInnes. Blue. Bullard. Lewandyke shakes away to the right of the goal now as play comes to the back. Suter once more flips one that sailed by Neuendijk, but is handled by Bullard. A minute ten to go on the power play. Neuendijk side of the net. Out in front. Lou couldn't get a good shot away. Lou back to Neuendijk. Gives it on to McGinnis. Then over to Suter. Flips one in front that is tipped away and then forced over by Conroy on defense and they're able to clear. You can see the options that Neuendijk has. And he does go in front, Mike. He just doesn't go and stand directly in front of Billy Smith. He stands away from the defensemen that are there defending. And then when the play moves to one side, he moves with it away from the front of the net as an outlet guy. They really know what they're doing. You can tell that they've been well coached and that they've got set plays out there. We'll wave their credentials at you again. First overall in points in the league, first in offense, and first in power play. And they have a chance to get back to within two, a minute and a half to go in the second period. They trail the Islanders five to two and make that five to three on the deflection by Joe Mullen. And, and as great a power play as they have, sometimes it's a little innocent shovel shot, shovel pass even, that ends up getting you a goal. And that's exactly what happened on this play. It comes back to Al McKinnis. He doesn't even bother to take the time to wind up. But you know he sees Joey Mullen. Watch Al McKinnis. He stopped it and simply rifled it as quickly as he could at the net. Joey Mullen was there to deflect it, and the Flames have closed to three. The power play comes through again. We talk about hand-eye coordination. And we take deflection so casually, I guess. Uh, those, of who, uh, those of us who sit up here and watch and uh, haven't played this game ourselves, but what quick work there. In moving for this one is King. Puck knocked away by Natras. Battle continues, and back it comes near Conroy. A little chop and broken out, and if they hurry, it's a two-on-one. Bozak gives on the wing, trying to move it in, but seeing the play break down with Brett Hall. Battle continues. They work it back to Merzen. Fires one. That into the stick of Lauer, but Merzen recovers. Side of the net. Oh, they nearly tipped it home. Bozak put it on the outside of the goal. Calgary goal is 29th of the season, scored by number seven, Joe Mullen. Well, if the second goal didn't pick them up, the third one has. You can see them really warming to the task now. You bet. We've talked in the past, Mike, about how it's possible not to turn it on like a switch, but if you regroup in a locker room, get a good talking to from the coach, have your leaders speak. You know that Lanny McDonald had some words to say in there. He's been one of the guys that's been working hard on his birthday here tonight. 
with a couple of breaks and a goal here and there, you can get that machinery working, that mental machinery working, and the concentration will come back, and all of a sudden you're lifted, and away you go. And let's face it, the Flames are the top offensive team in the NHL. They have the top power play. They always know they can come back. This is flipped down, but Gary Suter goes back. Don't go away in the intermission. Here is Kerr with a shot, and that ricocheted off McGinnis. Brought back up by Joe Mullen in the last 30 seconds of this period. Of course, Tom Meese will have a look at all the other games. We'll examine the game keys. Big drive by Bozak is wide. Turning with it is Diddick. And Diddick lifts it back out. Richard Dean Anderson will also be the focus of a special feature. Bozak across for Mullen, and that went wide. Mullen turned it in on goal, and Smith kicked it away. Mullen again. Manassas couldn't get away from one chance, then in front, couldn't get a shot away. Did you see how far the left Billy Smith came to help himself? Wow. It was Diddick who made the initial play that forced Mullen into some difficulty, but Billy Smith has just been sensational in this game. And the Flames, I think, I agree, Mike, they have awakened, and they have awakened on the strength of their power play. It's just a matter of holding the Islanders now and not letting them have any more. This could turn into a real good hockey game before we get out of here. Forty minutes have come and gone. It was five to one, but at the end of this second period, it is the New York Islanders five and the Calgary Flames three. And teams, the doorknob and the deadbolt, all in. It's the lock the doors love. For the nearest store with visor bolt, call 1 800 458 Lock. So the third period, your way with the score 5 to 3 in favor of the New York Islanders. And it'll be interesting to watch what might develop here because Calgary has charged back into this game. They have out hit the Islanders after having been out first, but they outgunned them. 28 in the second after being 20 to 8 in the second after being outshot 18 to 6 in the first. Play made back across to Brad McCrimmon. Then on to Lou. Pass clicks ahead to Roberts. Hands on the wing to Newendike. Newendike trying to move in and Billy Smith sprawling to block. on ESPN is being brought to you by Bud Light, proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. By United Airlines, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. And by Allstate, for home, auto, and life insurance, you're in good hands with Allstate. Well, Bullard in for this face-off opposite LaFontaine. Buck kicks back to Diddick, and Diddick will be able to follow up for the Islanders. Has to play to lighter, and then through to LaFontaine. LaFontaine moves on. Tried to drop one off for Gilbert, but it is Bullard having it reached from him by Kerr. LaFontaine for Gilbert. Couldn't finesse. Merzen on defense, and so it is Natras back along. Makala with three assists in the game. LaFontaine with a pair of goals. And the Calgary Flames scoring leader would be McGinnis with one goal and one assist so far. One minute, ten seconds gone here in the third period. If you're just joining us, Calgary scored first. The Islanders got the next five. And then with two goals in the last five minutes of the second period, the Flames have pulled back to within two. Natris taps. Otto takes. Pivoting away from Lauer. Lauer with the steal. Crosses and fires. Terry Crisp. And Doug Dadswell knew that he had to hold them in early in the third the way he did when he came out in the second. He did a big job in the second period of holding the Islanders to only one. But on this one, he gets fooled with a quick shot from Brad Lauer. Well placed by Lauer, though, cutting across in front of Dadswell. 6-3. You're watching NHL hockey on ESPN. From a very happy place right now, the Nassau County Veterans Memorial Coliseum in Uniondale, New York. The Islanders have gotten the first one here in the third period and have gotten their three-goal lead back again. Joel Otto starts ahead. 
And the Islanders have four men back at the blue line to meet the three men of Calgary. Back with it now comes Sutter. King on his right, Lauer on his left, and an offside play develops. Lauer's goal unassisted, his 12th of the year, just 90 seconds into this third period. After tonight, the Flames will have 21 games left. The Edmonton Oilers, 22. Eight for each will be left within their division. There are three teams whose schedules really stand out. Washington of 22 games left, 14 in the division out of 22. New Jersey, 13 out of the remaining 21 in the Patrick division. And Toronto, 10 out of their remaining 21 in the Norris. Basson crossing sticks with McDonald. And I suppose there are a couple different thought patterns that you might have on whether it's an advantage to have those games within your division or whether it's better to have them outside. Here's Dittick wrapping one around. Henry there, checked by McCrimmon, puck laid back down. This will be an icing call as going back to touch up will be Roberts. Oh, and what have we here? Hunter and a short right registered from Henry, but he just can't get free to throw any. Now he is. Pretty free now. Now he's got Hunter's help position Tim Hunter finds himself in very often as far as having the opponent get the upper hand tie up his, his big jackhammer also get the helmet off the man going with him is Dale Henry who is not known for doing much of this he has 59 minutes and penalties in the course of the year that what we couldn't see was one registering there from Henry, the way Hunter's head snapped back. Tim Hunter with his second fight of the night and his third altercation, although the first one did not result in penalties. 229 gone. In what is now a fistic third period, Flames behind by three. You want anything? How about a light? Oh. Whoa! <laughs> uh. Oh, Bob. Could you make that a Bud Light? If you want the great taste of Bud Light, ask for it. Did you see? No. Did you? No. Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. This will give you a pretty good look at what started it. That's Bob Basson who was raked into the boards by Tim Hunter. And it was Dale Henry that turned around to take exception to it. A little bit of hooking. A little bit of pushing. All right, let's go. Five-minute fights for each. Hunter and Henry at 2.29, still early in this third period of play. Gee, Hunter impressed me, didn't he? You, Bill? I, I did not see I'm sorry, yes, Henry. That's the first time I've ever seen him fight. Yeah, same for me. I know one thing, he's strong. I mean, Tim Hunter wasn't able to do anything with him at all. To a side battle, and it's Bozak. Billy Smith comes out to slide it away. His team ahead in this game, 6-3. Crom clears back down. Winnipeg seems to be en route to going undefeated in seven games. What's interesting about the NHL, it seems every team has an Achilles heel. And the difficult one for the team you're watching in red tonight is the Winnipeg Jets. Here's Crom scooping one back ahead, and it ricochets to Suter. The last 20 games Winnipeg has played against Calgary, the Jets have won 14 of them. And they're separated in the standings from Calgary by 15 points. Natras with a pass that is spun back out by Gilbert. And lost it back. So Billy Smith taps and leaves for Janssen. Then along to Gilbert. Gilbert has LaFontaine breaking. But that denied by Al McGinnis. Then to Mullen. The man up the wing is Bullard. The drop pass is for Bozak. Off the mark and back with it comes Leiter. Gilbert on his left, and that's where the play goes. Gilbert crosses a backhander, is blocked in front, and pops into the seats, and so we get a halt to play. 
what do you think about that divisional thing I was mentioning? Do you think it favors a team to have a lot of games this late in the season against divisional opponents? I, I really think it depends on where you where you sit in the standings. If you are leading your division, if I was a, on a team or coaching a team that was leading a division, I wouldn't care if I played anybody in the division going down in the stretch. But if I was trailing the division, I had to make up some points and get into those four-point games where if my team won, the other team would be deprived of getting two points and therefore the, the four-point game that we refer to, I would definitely want games within the division. So it, it just depends on where you are in the standings. From this tie up, it is Dana Merzen emerging. Given to Gilbert, he scores! Greg Gilbert, seven to three. More notes for the book. Another defensive lap by the laps by the Flames. But what a rocket backhander by Greg Gilbert, even when he broke it up. There's the mix up right there. It's between Al McInnes and and Bullard. And Gilbert was there to pick up the loose puck. But what a rocket on the backhand. He placed it so he deserves a goal. Anybody that can shoot it on the backhand and pick the top corner like that from in front. Tough to stop. Tough to read as it comes off the stick, too. Gilbert's 11th goal of the year. Here, just 3.57 into this third period. Finley brushes it loose. Pump tap, but going to gather is Finley. Has to contend with Tonelli and shoves him down. Islanders have impressed with their physical style tonight. And I'm not sure if you can put the finger on Vakoda for having everyone play a few pounds heavier here tonight or not. Hard to say. He certainly was able to, to neutralize the, whatever effect Tim Hunter might have had on the, uh, on the New York Islanders. But the Islanders, as usual, have worked to their potential tonight. A very hard-working hockey team. LaFontaine to Kerr, and that tipped away by Merzen. Now Crom centers, but Mullen is there, and it bounces where it can be played back out by McGinnis. 15 minutes to go in the third. McGinnis can't get by Conroy. Hustles back in with Crom. Conroy's shot is on goal. I'm sure the ex-Flame would have enjoyed scoring one against his old teammates there. This one jammed right in, and Billy Smith is out to get it. You look back at points in the game earlier when the Islanders' lead was only one or maybe two. And then when Calgary started back, Billy Smith has made a tremendous contribution to the Islanders' success thus far in this game with some really super saves in the second period particularly. Puck tapped back out, and Lauer starts ahead. Sized up, though, by Guy. Lauer pivots, gave it to King. King leaned on and carried by McCrimmon. Sutter in, working along with Colin Patterson. King tries to step away, but can't. Is laid back out by McCrimmon to Otto. Otto watched there by Finley. That one blocked off by Smith. Puck tipped out of play. We have 13.55 to go here in the third period on the strength of goals by Lauer and Gilbert. It is a four-goal lead for the home squad. Yesterday, when George Tucker left the Allstate Claim Center across the street, he figured the only thing that would bring him back was the pie he'd discovered. Unfortunately, the long, hot drive home exposed other minor damage that had gone undetected. Just the kind of thing Allstate Hidden Damage Protection insures him against. So today, Allstate gave George another check and a great new excuse for more pie. Allstate Hidden Damage Protection. Another reason. You're in good hands with Allstate. In St. Louis, the Buffalo Sabres are having their way with the Blues. This is a three-on-none. Kaye Johansson to Christian Rutu. Back to Johansson. He scores. Also give an assist to Tom Barrasso, the Buffalo goaltender. Let's go live to St. Louis. Check in on this game. Ted Darley and Mike Robitaille on the call with one minute second to go period. in the second period. Tomorrow night at 11.30 on TV 49's Late Night Movie, Jacqueline Smith marries a vicious political czar who imprisons her in their mansion when she threatens to expose his ruthlessness in escape from Bogan County. That's tomorrow night, 11.30 on WNYB TV 49, Buffalo Superstation. Usually, at this time of the year, I'd be saying, well, look at, uh, games are tough to come by right now. It's tough to win a hockey game. Things are getting tight. It's near the end of the season. That isn't the case here this evening. I can't imagine Buffalo right now with an easier 3 nothing lead. I mean, they, they could have a 3 nothing lead tonight against the hockey club uh, skating backwards. I, I've never seen St. Louis play so poorly 
And I like their hockey club. I like the way they play. They're just totally off their game tonight, though. Now in over the line, Gilmore. Bumps in there with Krupp. Take it by Sutter. Well, would you say the play of the Sabres uh, uh, compounds out as well? The fact that they've been playing well. Now Sutter with the drive. That's deflected. It'll be taken by Anderson. Now it comes to Rutu. Rutu back to the St. Louis line. Gets in over the line and one hand of the puck off Sutter. Now well, Millen plays it to the far side for Gilmore. 18 seconds left in the period. 3 0. Buffalo leading. Now Barassa will stop it behind the net. Now taken by Housley. Housley checked by Sutter. Nine seconds to go. Here's a chance for the Blues, but the puck did not get through. And Halkitas plays it around to the far side. Three seconds remaining. That's it. There goes the horn to end the second player. So the St. Louis Blues down, down from the stands in St. Louis. The hometown St. Louis Blues trailing Buffalo now. Three nothing after two periods. What did you miss? Well. You missed another goal for the New York Islanders. More of the same you've been seeing all night. And once again, it was Brad Gilbert. Number seven steals it from Gary Suter. Colin Dads, well, actually was off balance. Had to go in off his skate, it appeared. Let's go back to Mike Emmerich and Bill Clement on Long Island. Gentlemen. Thank you, Tom. We have a couple of two-goal scorers tonight for the Islanders in Greg Gilbert and Pat LaFontaine. LaFontaine came late in the first and midway in the second and really staked the Islanders to the big lead of 5-1. Calgary came back and then Gilbert got his two. Eight to three in favor of the Islanders with 12.40 to go here in the third period. Puck spun back around and Crom controlling it, sliding it cross ice to Janssen. Janssen watched by Tonelli, lays it back over and that one tipped to the corner. Trotche centers one and Dadswell had to tip that one away. You think they're starting to think just shoot it anywhere, sharp angle, let's yeah. just get it on that. When the wheels fall off, sometimes you skid to a halt in a big hurry. Otto trying to get through a <laughs> collision with Conroy. And play comes back to the Islanders. And Crown. Oh, and Dadswell has some trouble with that one. Turn back over to Merzen. We were mentioning during the intermission that in one of our earlier games here that uh, there were very few penalties called in the third after there'd been some in the first and second. And that was simply a statement of fact in the, the game that uh, the referee is working tonight was working then Andy Van Helleman. But overall that has been a rare occasion in the NHL this year because they have uh, emphasized the fact that a penalty in the first should be called in the third. And that's what's going to happen right now. Eight minutes, 22 seconds gone off the scoreboard here in the third period. Islanders by a fistful. Hi there. You looking for Mr. Wright? Give this guy a light. Wow. And Bud Light here. Who asked for Bud Light? A light beer with the first name and taste. Because everything else is just a light. Thanks. Keep the chains. When your sore throat is slow torture, Chloroseptic stops the pain and fast. How fast? So fast, she'll feel relief even before we can finish this commercial. You know that the Calgary Flames had to be hoping for penalties in this third period, but not penalties that their players take. Steve Bozak hooks down Derek King, and it's the Islanders that have a two-minute power play here. Brent Sutter can't control that one, and it is thrown. And on with this now comes Joel Otto, trying to get by Diddick. Second effort shot floated wide. Here's a giveaway to Otto, then for Lube. And Lube just muscled along by Finley. Now pushes with Lauer. But still up for grabs and controlled by Lauer. Lauer's goal was the big one. It appears so far because at 90 seconds into the third and the game really up for grabs because the Flames have pulled back within two. He made it a three goal Islander advantage. He's taken off by Suter. A minute 10 to go on this fifth New York Islanders power play. They've clicked on three of the previous four. McGinnis going back to take it. We have an icing call against the Islanders, bringing the face off back near Billy Smith. I agree 100% that Brad Lauer's goal was the big one. There's a, obviously there's a one goal difference between leading five to three and six to three. But when you're only down by two, 
you know that if you get that one, you can do things like pull your goalie at the end of the game, and there's, there's a big rush and a, and a big amount of pressure on the team that's nursing a one-goal lead when you get down to just a couple of minutes to play. So that's big breathing room when you go from a two-goal lead to a three-goal lead. Atlanta Flames moved to Calgary in 1980. And many of the Flames, of course, Canadian-born, so they moved back into the culture of their homeland. I know one story I was hearing a lot about in the fall of 80, Bill, was the difference in real estate values from one country to the other, especially one part of the country, Atlanta, to the other in Calgary. Billy Smith grabs that one, and it is lighter, controlling behind. Still 50 seconds to go on this Islanders power play. And a hit with it is LaFontaine. Checked and spun out by Patterson. Lighter along to Janssen. They tried to connect with Makala. Pass from Trottier. LaFontaine goes in. Punches it behind to Makala. Back to LaFontaine. Has Trottier in front. Gets to the back to Leiter. Leiter takes a look and slides it over to Janssen. 25 seconds left on the power play. Leiter once more. In front of the goalie was Trottier, but that ricocheted off a defenseman. Leiter again. Trottier moves right back. McCrimmon moves toward LaFontaine, who heads behind. Pass tipped by Neuendijk. LaFontaine right back again to Janssen. Johnson shuffles one back along to Makala. Makala shot, and that one went wide. Makala controlling once more. Penalty time is up. Team's back at full strength. Lighter to LaFontaine. Cleared by Neuendijk. Kept by Janssen. Makala, LaFontaine wide. Neuendijk clears it all the way this time. You can see what happens when the two guys at the top of the box cheat out and play very aggressively. When the guys on defense can move it into the side of the net, there's a huge seam in the middle of the box, and that was the feed right through to LaFontaine. He just misfired on it. Here's a look at it. See how high the penalty killers are out for, uh, for the Flames? There's Colin Patterson, Steve Bozek. They're out high. They struggle to get back in. And that seam was wide open with them being out near Thomas Janssen. Islanders leading this game by five. In case you're just joining us, by a score of eight to three with 9-10 to go in the third period of action. Finley scales one back in. Dana Merzen flipped down in front. Penalty will be coming up, and Vakoda was the man who drew the infraction. The Flames will come to the penalty box. And again, it'll be an Islander power play with nine minutes and a second to go here in the third. Get a fully automatic 35 millimeter appearance call that was right in front of his goal. And once again, the Islanders going to power play. Pretty tough to play catch up when you're, you're down a man time and time again. Got to go for the shorthanded goals. And that's, uh, as you can imagine, an uphill climb. Flames have Kevin Guy, who's able to clear this one back down, so Diddick will go to get it. Now, they have out LaFontaine working with Kerr and Gilbert up front. Diddick, of course, will man one point, and the other will be handled by Jeff Finley, who's getting a lot of work in the last couple of games, the one against the Rangers on Sunday, and then this one tonight for the Islanders, and here he is again. Fire score! Get the puck, it's number one. He's actually writing on his little finger there. He's out of paper. <laughs> Have a drink, Doug. Have two. They're small. Nine to three. On a blast from the point, the power play comes back to haunt the Calgary Flames. The Islanders' power play, that is. The Islanders have simply ripped it away from the Flames from the word go in this hockey game. And only briefly for, I would say, a total of about a ten-minute period have the Flames come close to getting back into it. That almost looked like it went off Greg Gilbert, but Gilbert motioned to Finley right away. Let's see if we can see what happened on this one. The signs of an unselfish hockey team. Let's see if anybody deflects this. Here it comes. Good look at it. You bet he deflected it, but he's going to give it to Finley, you know that, and say that he didn't deflect it, and that was Gilbert's hat trick. I, and last talked about him having two goals tonight. He did deflect that Brian Trottier one that Trottier deflected first, and LaFontaine didn't claim it. In my mind, LaFontaine has three and Gilbert has three, but they spread the wealth. Oh, okay. How about that? All right, so Gilbert wasn't that generous. They've just given the goal to Gilbert. Number four, Gerald 
Maybe they were picking up the puck because it was Gilbert's uh, hat That's trick it. as yeah. opposed to Finley's first goal. Absolutely. I think I misled everyone there. By well, it was a, it was a, he, he hardly touched it. We had to see it on the replay to see if he did redirect it. But they still, I'll, I'll, I'll still stick by it. They are an unselfish hockey team and a team that's willing to sacrifice their individual goals for the good of the team. It starts right with guys like Brent Sutter and Brian Trottier. And now I think Pat Lafontaine is learning more and more year after year that uh, individual sacrifice for winning hockey games. Neuendijk tried to connect with Roberts in front, but that blocked behind. Bill and I saw an example of that after the game Saturday night in Los Angeles. We went downstairs uh, from the press area to the Penguins locker room and right outside that at the forum in Los Angeles there is a, a room where they have a number of television monitors and tape machines and Mario Lemieux had asked the official scorer to remove, remove an assist from him and that was one that made him seven points and also established a new Penguin record. He said that was not my assist. They took a look at the videotape and the only part of the conversation I heard was the scorer saying then it's not yours and his response was no that goes to Doug Bodger. So Mario has a share of a record, but not the entire thing. Long sort of story to just point up the, the unselfishness that we tend to see. And there's the captain of the Penguins leading through another example. It, it certainly is a sign of leadership. Any true leader would want the people around him to excel as much as he excels. So when you see that, you can tell that there's some leadership involved. McCrimmon's pass blocked off by Conroy, but then regathered and worked back out by Suter. In case you're just joining us and you're noticing a few empty seats, those were sold tonight, but some of the fans have headed for the exits early. They're happy, though, most of them, because the Islanders have a 9-3 lead in this game with 6 minutes and 40 seconds to go. Brom tried to get to the front, poked away by Dadswell, and back up with it now for the Flames. Moving it along was a pass from Roberts across for Lou. I think maybe some of those seats have left to, to get a head start at going to work in the morning. It's about a nine-hour trip from here into, into Manhattan, and we're only about 45 miles away. Boy, that's one of the worst drives on the continent is from here into, into New York City in the morning. Puck turned back along by Crom. Bill, did you have to sell a house and buy one when you went from Atlanta to Calgary? I didn't have to. I was dumb enough to do it anyway, though. <laughs> it was. You mentioned the, the cost of living in Calgary. There's only one word to describe what it was like trying to buy a home in Calgary after having one in Atlanta. Depressing. Here's Brent Sutter pivoting with it. I'm sure a lot of people out there have, ha have had to make a move in their time, maybe a transfer in business and sell one and buy another. And I guess you just take that to the second power when you were dealing with the real estate in Calgary. Here's a backhander by Lauer tipped away. We should register in our minds here that LaFontaine has two and has the opportunity for a hat trick. Lauer has one. There's a shot by Brent Sutter that is grabbed and held by Dadswell. 5.28 to go in the third period. 9-3, the eye. Knocked loose to Suter, and Suter brings it back up for Calgary. Going back to get this is Diddick. There'll be another penalty called here. Away from the puck, and uh, it is a holding infraction. You know, I think the fans, and maybe the players too, Bill, appreciate what the league has done this year by really asking the officials to be even more stringent on penalty calls in the third that are penalty calls in the first. And here's an example with Andy Van for holding. Well, it had to happen, and I agree with it 100%. There's absolutely no way that a penalty should be uh, different in the first than in the third. It has to be called consistently from start to finish, and I think the officials have done a much better job this year. So Alan Kerr sits. We talked earlier about the Flames' size. I guess it's only good if you use it. 15 of the Flames are over 6 feet tall. You know that? 10 of them are 6'2 or better. 15 are over 195 pounds, and of those... 10 or 200 pounders of the 10 200 pounders four are 210 or over and they got two players that are over 220 pounds on their roster they're big but what we've seen tonight is big ain't worth an ounce if you don't use it well it was the Isles out hitting the flames uh, an icing call here stops the clock Islanders out hit the flames in the first and then vice versa in the second what's happened in the third well the Islanders have out hit the flames 13 to 9 in the uh, third period and the, and the periods really have gone with the hits uh, They've also gone with the defensive breakdowns as well. 
and the Flames just weren't able. You know, they, they dug themselves too big a hole to climb back out. It got to be 5-3. to three. They appeared to be coming with the concentration and regrouping and getting that focus in mentally so that you can get the legs going. If you don't have that concentration before the game, believe it or not, this might sound strange to some people, the physical isn't there. You can't make the legs go every time you go on the ice if you're not mentally prepared. So one follows the other. Battle here of five players. Puck sped back to the point and worked over to McGinnis. His drive, oh, answered by Smith. Rebound sent wide by Neuendijk. That's really the best chance Neuendijk's had all night. McGinnis a shot, and that's tipped away by Billy Smith. He's not had that much work, but boy, has he risen when needed. Oh, he's a poised guy right now. He's making it look easy. That was a can on the first one. He just came out, made the save. The second one was a rocket from Al McGinnis as well. But Smith, in his years, has never been a guy that's really panicked. And that's one of the reasons that's made him a good money goalie. He's always been strong in the playoffs. Pressure doesn't bother him. You know, you talked about the size. I know Cliff Fletcher is always, uh, the general manager of Calgary, has always said that he likes to go for wingers that are at least six feet, defensemen that are at least six feet, maybe bigger, and also go in the neighborhood of 200 pounds. But it's interesting. Sometimes they vary from that, and they have a guy that captained the World Junior Championship team for Canada, Theron Fleury, who is only five feet five. McGinnis over now to Tonelli. And Tonelli feeds one in front, snapped away from Otto by Gilbert, and then a rocket from McCrimmon went wide. Finley rolls, McInnes taps. Finley trying again, but it comes to Joe Mullen. Then to Tonelli, 12 seconds left power play. Hands it on back to McCrimmon. Fires, and that one wide. McInnes again, over to McCrimmon. At the front is Otto, and the pass comes to him. He hit the post with the shot. It is Trotje to turn it back further. Three minutes to go in the third period of play. Islanders leading the Flames 9-3. to three. Henry and Mullen go in. Now Otto behind. Mullen banks it along for Guy. Swung back for Otto. Checked on by Henry. They sweep it back for Guy. Another penalty coming up. This one against the Islanders. Now they touch, and we get the stoppage of play. Two minutes, 34 seconds to go in the third. Islanders go shorthanded, but are long on the board. Who can resist the smoothness of an Noxzema shave? It's mm-mm medicated. So close, so clean, Noxzema. She can't resist her Mr. Irresistible. My mother-in-law recommended Preparation H for my hemorrhoidal symptoms. Why should I listen to my mother-in-law? She's also a doctor. In a national survey, two out of three doctors named Preparation H among the hemorrhoid remedies they recommended to their patients. Doctors know best. Henry boxed with 2.34 to go in the third period. Nine to three, Islanders ahead. Buffalo leading St. Louis, Winnipeg leading Quebec. You'll know more about those with Tom Meese later. Not much of a birthday celebration for Landon McDonald tonight. His kids called him this morning and saying happy birthday to him. And it was, uh, sure it was a very sweet moment for him, but later in the day, and we are talking right now, the bitterness of this game has come through. You know, you talked about what Cliff Fletcher wants out of, uh, out of players, the big wingers. He also likes goalies that can stop the puck. And while that might seem like a shot at Mike Vernon, who is an outstanding goalie, uh, they just had an off night. Oh, man, speaking of on night, <laughs> Billy Smith, it, it's been a, a frustrating night for the Flames all around. When they have had quality chances, Billy Smith has really played an outstanding hockey game. Watch this save. Now, yeah. he had to move for that one. We've shown replays where very often the puck goes right into the glove, and it looks as if the goalie's made a sprawling save. He made that one. Flames have had but one power play goal tonight. McCrimmon trying for a second, but Smith got that one, too. Another day at the office, huh? He's playing out his option, and he said, I've never been lighter since high school. He's trimmed off 15 pounds. 
And we're saying this on Fat Tuesday. Some of uh, some of us are, are going on those various things and uh, tomorrow being the start of Lent. And if you've ever tried to start to lose weight, you know how hard it is to discipline yourself. And Billy's been riding the bicycle on a regular basis and just wanting to keep that weight right down there. Well, he's got a personal trainer now too, doesn't he? The same guy that trained Mark Gastineau of the uh, of the Jets. The, the man is named Barathe, Richie Barathe. He wrote a book called The, the Body You Want. And it has to do with the rapport between the mind and the musculature, which is something I would have to have explained to me. But Billy Smith has become a, a follower of this man's uh, preachings. <laughs> Looks like it's working to me. Boy, it does, doesn't it? Here's McGinnis. The cross-eyed pass is cut off, and here's a two-on-one. Thomas Johnson and Crom. I bet Crom gives it to him. No. Held to the side of the net by Datswell. Well, of course, Crom has been since the 20th of November since he scored. So you had two guys that have had a hard time scoring lately going in on that break. Boy, if you're ever going to shoot one, that's the time. You're up 9-3, to three and you might look a little selfish if you didn't really go out of your way to try and pass it on a two-on-one. But if anybody needed a goal for the Highlanders, it was Rich Crom. McKinnis over to Suter. 54 seconds left on the power play. McKinnis again. Drive. Tip to the glass. And now it is Bullard. Back to McGinnis, then along to Mike Bullard again. Suter with a shot, and that skipped wide. What? Bullard flipped one to the front that went off of Conroy for the Islanders and is grabbed then by Crom, and he'll just lay it back down. Very shortly, you'll hear the announcement, final minute. Last minute play in the period. One minute. 23 seconds to go on the power play to Calgary. Hull a drive. Just playing his angles. Not much movement necessary on that one. Just turn it aside. And it is Kerr drilling it back down. Islanders must certainly be pleased with the goalkeeping. Not only they've seen from Smith tonight, but in some previous games too. Although he was uh, relieved in the game in Washington if our sources are correct but tonight he has looked splendid and it's been a low sharing thing it is not that Rudy has been having a lopsided number of the games 15 seconds to go Kerr turning shuffles it back off to Conroy LaFontaine threw it in front and the crowd happily chanting down these final seconds one more game off the road trip for Calgary. A game in hand now for the Edmonton Oilers. As they trail Calgary by three, and by virtue of the victory, the Islanders move into second place, one ahead of Washington, three points behind Philadelphia. And the notebook gets fuller. I don't know the way Billy Smith played. If the Flames had even come prepared to play, what kind of damage they would have been able to do. He seemed to get stronger as the game went on. And the one thing that the Calgary Flames gave the New York Islanders in too many situations tonight, Mike, was time. They gave them time, and they gave them space. And you just break down defensively when you give a team both of those elements. That's what they did. We saw it early in the game. And they dug themselves a hole that was just too big to get out after all. And that big goal by Lauer in the third period to open the third period was what killed them. Well, the Calgary Flames came into the game tonight with all the big numbers. But the Islanders leave with the most significant one of all. And it's a big one. Nine to three. Fred Pierre,